to the Touch Tennis Show. I'm sorry, as usual, we're late. It's not because we were watching Arsenal. Um, it's on in the background, but that's completely immaterial. It's because of this man. Is it my fault? Yeah, you just uh, broke great. my iPad, and I've now gone and broken my phone. Okay, great. Right. Everything's my fault, as you <laughs> saw. I just broke his phone. Yeah, in honour of him. You know. Chris Eaton, how you doing? Thank you, everyone who's tuned in. Um, whether you're tuning in live or whether you're watching this on repeat, um, on Dave, which is the home of Witty Repeats, and that's all they do is play back stuff over and over again. One day we may actually be on that channel, um, and uh, look forward to the day, and my ego won't get any bigger, I promise you. I'll still be quite balanced and normal. Um, it can't get any bigger. This is true. But why shouldn't it be as big as it is? We won't get into that. We don't have enough time. Yeah, well, it's only a half an hour show. So we're going to try and be as loud as possible. The other thing that's gone wrong is our mics have decided they don't want to work anymore. And so we're sitting here looking at these things and they're broken. Um, if you want to call in, you're going to have to shout. Um, you can speak up. Now, some of the things we want to talk about tonight, Federer absolutely cuffed Petita Sirachi today. Yeah, I mean, Federer, Federer can't really say quiet for too long. He's been fairly quiet in this clay court season so far. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's you know, had one of those those performances where he just lets all his magic show and, you know, comes up with anything he really wants to. Yeah. And it's just quite scary to watch, really. We are going to talk a little bit about that, but also about betting tonight, about odds. Um, because we um, made a couple of calls last week on uh, what we thought was going to happen. Um, and, you know, we, we discussed Murray, and, uh, and I thought he was going to lose to Simon. Very and, close. Uh, well, I backed him, and I mean, if anyone doubts that, I can send them the bet slip. I backed Simon to beat him, and after the first set, sold the bet, just cashed out. Because you were saying something about Murray and slow starting on play. Yeah, yeah, no, Murray, Murray's quite a notorious slow starter in general, on any surface, really. Um, I'm not, not 100% sure why that is. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure if he knew, he'd do something about it. Right. But, um, yeah, I'm sure they're trying to figure that out. But uh, it's, always, it's always an interesting one, because... You know, Murray, even this week, he's playing against, um, uh, Murray's got, hang on, I've been looking at all the odds, and I've, and then he's smashed the computer, so he's got his jacket, why don't no. look? I don't know. While he's doing that, we'll yeah. talk a little bit about what I then did, I backed Burdick to smoke Murray, and again, um, just a nice little cheeky £20 bet, I felt that, as much as they say it doesn't affect these top players being tired the next day, Burdick was just playing really, really well, and it's... The ideal scenario for him is bullet quick. Yeah. Um, you know, it's that altitude and, and Madrid is the thing also to remember. It is almost enclosed, even though they've got you know a roof. It's there's very little wind there. Mm -hmm. You hardly ever see uh, the clay court surface blowing. And Burdick's ball toss, which is about you know, it has snow when it comes back down. Exactly. I mean, it wasn't going to move, so he's going to have a chance. Whereas when they played at the US Open, do you remember how windy it was? And Burdick still managed to make a pretty good fist of it, but it was incredibly tough with that ball toss just going all over the place that he didn't feel confident enough to go after that first serve. So again, I felt that was a pretty clear-cut match. Um, the really bad one I made last week was usually was 28-1 to 1 against Nadal, and I just thought, well, if Nadal gets, you know, not that we wish ill on anyone, but you never know. You know, he starts hurting his knee, pulls out because he wants to protect himself. For the French Open, set down twenty-eight to one in a two-horse race. You can never really say no to that. No, no, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Um, no, I found out and he's playing a guy called Marcel Granollers. Ah, awkward. About, yeah, twenty Spanish, twenty-ish in the world. Spanish, obviously knows how to play on the clay. Huge forehand. I've actually played him. In oh, okay. Yeah, huge forehand. Actually, now he's. I think he's the second pair in the world at the moment in doubles. Oh, really? Him and Mark Lopez. Yeah, wow. so he's obviously winning matches, you know, feeling pretty good about things, probably quite relaxed because he's probably making some money off the, off the doubles, so, you know, not too worried. But again, you know, things like things like Murray to win in three, you get five to one. That's not bad at all. You know, Murray <clears> to just <throat> slow start, not really respect Granollers enough, maybe, yeah. you know, lose a set and then probably come strong and win. Yeah. You know, I think I think those, those are the sort of things where you can, where you can look to sort of Make make a bit of money if you can call sort of the nu number of sets and yeah. people winning. Two I always find that what, that is one of the tougher things to do. So I mean, bear in mind that if you if you're gonna bet, I mean, first of all, do it responsibly. Yeah. Um, do it with your wife's money <laughs> or <laughs> your husband's money, whichever way around. You know, um, in the case of Matthew Watson from Kirby, it's always his husband's money. Um, but if you know if you're gonna do it, uh, you know, responsibly, have a bit of fun with it. You know, don't go and put your life savings on somebody, but look at some of the fun odds. I mean, what were some of the other ones you were looking at today that were I mean, you know, if you if you just want to put 
a cheeky fiver down, why not go for Fed? Fed is 13, 13 or 14 to 1 to win the tournament. This is Rome. And where's that on Betfair? Where did you find that? Yeah, that was on Betfair. That was yeah. on your account. I don't know. Oh, great. Thanks. Did you put me my money on? No, I couldn't log in. <laughs> The password um, is I love Chrissy. Yeah, uh, yeah, standard. Yeah, Same exactly. as all your other things. Um, no, but that I mean that's Probably the way he was playing today. Oh, I was going to say some weird dog. Yeah, I'm, uh, <laughs> snuck in. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, the way he's playing today, you know, 13, 14 to one. Yeah, on a man who's sitting in a ball like that. Yeah, you can't. Can't. cheeky fiver. Yeah, you know, why not? Why not? I, I mean, those, those are the sort of bets. Certainly for me as a non non gambler. Yeah, I look for the ones where I I can put on a little bit bit more risk and you know yeah get a decent reward on it um but yeah there's a couple of interesting ones Badasco plays for rare oh no they have some tussle don't they they do it all depends on whether Badasco is going to show up though remember Ferret just got cuffed by Vavrinka exactly so mentally he might just be a bit be a bit down Badasco's got so much firepower yeah you know so if he turns up he's a serious baller and what and are the odds are you getting on the Dasco? Five, one? six to one. Oh, I mean, two horse race again. That's crazy. Not, I mean, there are some of those picks there that I think may sound outrageous, but would be awesome fun. I mean, I go Vadasco. If you can get five and a half or six on Betfair, just sell it after a set. Or if he goes a double break up, you can cash out. Mm. I mean, you don't need to hang on till the end of the match now with their facility. Um, you can just go straight up, go to Ladbrokes or Paddy Power, one of those two, um, uh, and back either player. Um, but I always prefer exchanges where you're betting on a possible outcome rather than just the yeah. final outcome. So, you know, you can sell your bets. Um, if you're going to back Federer at 13 or 14 to 1, then again, that, you don't really need bet, bet there for that. Anyone you could use. But bear in mind that when he gets to the final, just lay off. You know, so if it's a fiver you put on him and he comes up against Rafa the other side, just put 10 quid on Rafa because Rafa will probably be 1 to 3. You'll make yeah. 15 quid for that, which will cover your original bet on Federer, and you'll make your 10 back. So probably not you know, a bad idea to sell it when it gets to that stage. If, if it's a cheeky bet, if it's a fiver or something, you, you're never going to be doing really well if you're selling it any earlier than the finals, um, simply because you there's too many variables. You sell it in the semis, and then he comes up against the lights out Djokovic in the finals. You've got to lay off again. And again and again. So laying off is the kind of thing you do once in a while. Anything in the women's going on that you would have a look at odds wise? Uh, no, moving on. The ATP I guess. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, no idea. No yeah. idea about the women's. But Laura. maybe maybe one more. I think Laura's playing now. Yeah, against Hopefully Serena Williams. She's still on court because yeah. she was on court about an hour ago. So yeah, against Serena. Against Serena. Matches Serena. don't generally last very long either way. <laughs> Staying on court for an hour is actually probably the yeah the girl's goal at the moment. All those people play against her. Yes, yeah, she's brutal. Yeah, they're it's probably brutal. going to the locker room don't ask what the score is like. Have you been gone a while? Well yeah. done. Well done. Get a little fist bump yeah, out for exactly. a 53 minute look. Exactly. Yeah, Did so. you see the first set between Federer and Petito Storacci today was 19 minutes? That's a cuffing. I mean, 19 minutes. I mean, uh, I got someone sent me through the stats. Actually, one of your fellow Brit players, or one of our fellow Brit uh, tennis players, Emily Webley Smith. Um, and she said to me, let's have a look, Fed, 35 winners, 8 unforced errors, Starachi, 9 unforced errors, but loses 1 and 2. Ouch. I mean, <laughs> 35 winners is, you know, that's so many for... In a match that only lasted that 15 few, games. Yeah, for that few games, yeah. that's incredible. If I was any good at maths, I'd tell you the numbers there. 15 but. games. That's three winners again. Three winners again. Yeah. Is it 15 times 2 is 45? So no, it's two. <laughs> I'm not very That's why I didn't do that. So I think it's about two and a half. I think it's about two and a half. Um, uh, I'm coaching in a tennis camp in Vermont. No, that's nothing of interest. We've got some tweets here. Um, probably worth just having a bit of banter with. No, Active Holidays followed us. Um, and Dom McCormack, where can you watch it? Um, you're not very bright, are you? So I'm just going to send you where we are at. Can't really reply to that on air, can we? I can, I can just send them a tweet. Yeah, but you can't say, watch it on, because he'd already be watching it. Well, hopefully he'll watch it on replay now, and he'll uh, realize it's then, not then really he'll, Yeah, yeah he'll brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Or actually, we hope that he doesn't watch it on replay, and we just abuse him for the next 10 minutes while he's trying <laughs> to figure out his Twitter. Um, not very, very bright at all. Niall Stewart's followed me, thank you very much, Niall. Uh, some experience with you. 
and then we've got active holidays. What do you think of this concept? Netherlands are building a, a indoor golf course in a giant golf club. Okay. Do you play golf? Yeah, still don't care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anything else that's come through? Uh, Sasha Jones um, would love it if Touch Tennis would do a tournament at the end of August, beginning of September, around the east coast of the USA. Have a think. Well, we've had a think, and on the 12th of September 2013, we have the US Open. Now, traditionally, it's been held in Springfield, Missouri, but Larry Hawkness, who runs the event, is talking about holding it in Florida this year. Nice. Now, that's got to be worth a trip, huh? It's pretty cool, yeah. Any reason yeah. to go to Florida. Yeah, any reason to get out there. You know, yeah. hopefully, maybe even Tallahassee for you. <laughs> Yeah, you exactly. got your fan that ran in that time. What yeah. was her name, Cora or Cara? Cara, yeah. yeah. Cara, I hope you got your T-shirt. Um, she did. She did give it to me. She did, yeah. Did. Ramos, yeah. Actually, she did say on Facebook, um, I'm wearing it. Um, yeah. So that's a great thing. Uh, let's see what we've got come in on Facebook, uh, because there's always some Muppet sends a message there, despite me telling them not to send it there. Oh, actually, I've got to take a pot shot today. Uh, and this is something I find very interesting. There is a guy called J.P. Weber. Um, and he comments on a group called We Coach Tennis okay. on Facebook. He is the world's greatest tool. You are an absolute weapon. Quite apart from the fact that you're a keyboard gangster who just sends his rough and tough messages across the pond, I would love you to come over here so I could knock you out. Because some of the things you say are beneath contempt. You insult some of the most incredible coaches and decent people I've ever seen or, and had the pleasure of meeting. Uh, and he just goes and abuses them, hiding behind his keyboard. Yeah, but I've done, goddamn, I've done this and I've done that and I've done, we, we don't want your mandate. And all he even goes on about is his mandate. Who cares? We're in England. We don't care about the mandate that the USDA stuffed down your throats. That's your problem. Deal with it. Move on. But please, um, I live in Claygate in Surrey, so if you ever want to come around and have a tussle, please let me know. It'd be my pleasure. Um, the fact that there'll be 400 Brits here waiting to beat the living daylights out of him is... Neither here nor there. But, I mean, you should see some of his posts. Have a look at it. We Coach Tennis. I think it's a private group that you can ask to join. Please, anyone that's a Touch Tennis fan, go on there and abuse him. Um, I've so far held my tongue a couple of times, but occasionally I let vent. Yeah, I, no, I can imagine. But, yeah, no, he took a shot at Chris Sutar. And Chris is one of the most decent people you'll meet. Um, played Touch Tennis with him, actually, um, late last week. Yeah, I heard about that. He was... Uh, well, no, I mean, it was, he was, it was his first time. You know, I would give the first match to people. You've never given anything to anybody. <laughs> well, apart from some, you know, clinical conditions. But, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. but I did actually, you know, I, I did. I gave him the match. It felt bad for him. You know, I knew he was going to go home. He was going to feel a bit, you know, beaten up on. He, had, uh, he was doing a coaching course here at Bromley with Nick Cavaday and with Louis Caillet. And, um, yeah, it was, a, it, was, you know, it was a good day. We, we had a bit of a battle. Um, I surfed for it, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to throw this. So I surfed a couple in the net. <laughs> you talk so much, guys. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I just thought, uh, I thought I'd check the Laura Robson score. Yeah. Uh, she is 6-2, 5-2 two, two down. Ooh. But she's been on court for an hour and ten minutes. Wow. Yeah. Indian time out, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, Serena's having one of those anxiety breaks, or is that as a ranker? That's as a ranker. Oh, that's terrible. But listen, if you want any, you've got any questions for us about odds or anything like that, you can call in while we're live. Well, um, there's no point in doing it after we've gone off air, which is in about, oh, in about 10 minutes, because you won't get through to us. You might still be watching the football. Can you hear it, Dan? Yeah, they're still playing. So most of you are probably watching Arsenal Wigan. We do have a bunch of northern people that watch the show. Um, so that might be, you know, might be down to them. Well, yeah. We haven't actually tested whether the phone works. It looks like it works, but should we try it? Why not? Please. Let's have a look. This, oh, this is the professional work. outfit that is the Touch Tennis show. Yeah, our microphones don't work, and our lights are too bright, and I'm practically blind because of that one. Um, uh, it works. There we go. Perfect. What I'm amazed at is the magician hasn't called in to win a racket. We were expecting the magician to call in. Isn't he an arsehole fan? Yeah, but the magician will get the answer wrong. I know, I know there's only three possible answers. Maybe we two of them, but he'll still <laughs> get it wrong. Multiple choice of one. Yeah, he'll choose the other one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he'll take the bullet, yeah. as they say. Yeah. He'll find yeah. the wrong way around it. Is it A, five, or... No, there's just A. Yeah. Uh, pass. Yeah. No idea. Uh, <laughs> Emma! <laughs> uh, sorry, you, you can always tell when, when the brains of a relationship 
is in front of you yeah. when Emma turned up here on the show to, to join us. Um, Jeremy Bates uh, was meant to be on the show tonight. He thought it was last night, sent me a text this morning saying, sorry, I couldn't make it. And he's now said he will be here with us um, doing a charity thing anyway, but we discussed me coming over after Eurosport. That was yesterday. Tonight was never on. I'm confused. Uh, no, we never discussed me coming over to Eurosport. I know exactly when you were doing Eurosport. That was yesterday because I was at Simon's house when you got the call. Um, tennis players. Yeah. Organizational Ooh. skills. None. Yeah. Zero. Absolutely zero. Well, he has talked about... Um, coming in on the first Tuesday of the French. So do watch out. We'll have Jeremy Bates on the show. And if you're here to take your questions, anyone wants to phone in, you could also just ring in and abuse him um, for not being here tonight and letting everyone down. Yeah. Um, but in the meanwhile, let's see if Don McCormack's actually figured out how to use Twitter and figured out whether he's watching the show or not. Adam Hassan has asked about grunting. Um, uh, this weapon, Don McCormack, has now said, what racket's on offer? Call in... And you'll find out. Call in and you'll find out. How about that? Does that sound good? Yeah, fair enough. He's just going to get abused. 0203. Oh, hang on. Have I got the number right? 0203 397 4087. There you go. Beautiful. There you go. Yes. Wait, someone calling in. What, what are we asking about? Anything about miss oh, missed calls? Because it messages there for a second. But no, um, um, apologies if you can't hear a lot of what we're saying. It is because the mics are broken. It's not because I'm stupid. Or it could be a combination of both. But I'm pretty certain it's because the mics are broken. So you will be able to pick this up. You'll have to crank your volume up quite loud, especially if someone calls in. It's going to be hard to hear them. Um, the, yeah, the question that I got from Adam Hassan about grunting. Um, did you, have you heard uh, Berlock when he's playing? Yeah. Playing Stan Wawrinka tonight. Oh, actually, that's one of my picks, actually. Stan Wawrinka, uh, who's he got next round? Dolgopolov. Dolgopolov, okay. Stan Wawrinka will probably have, they'll probably increase the odds on him simply because he went three sets with a guy who was a qualifier. What they might be forgetting, I think, is that Wawrinka's just switched very suddenly, only two days ago from Madrid, bullet quick, bouncing very high at altitude to Rome, very hot today and very, very slow bounce about here. You know, really dogged courts that are, yeah. aren't as easy to move on. Very hard granules on the top and the ball gets, soaks up a lot of it. It's about here, it looks like. Um, and Berlock was ripping the cover off the ball, trying to get it above shoulder height. Stan looked like he'd had a few too many burgers. So, but we know he can go 12-10 in the fifth with Djokovic. So yeah, there's yeah. every chance that tomorrow he'll be fine after he's had a couple more of those, you know, uh, Le Royale with cheese. Now, hang on, it's in Rome. What do they call them? No idea. I've never been to Italy. Have you? What? No. No way. Yeah. You've never been to Italy? No. You're not missing anything. Only fake ones. <laughs> yeah, why would you go? <laughs> why would I go? Yeah, exactly. Now, they're, they're, I'm trying to think of any Italian people that I like. I went out with an Italian once. She was an absolute psychopath. She tried to run me over. Most people would like to <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was that was then. Um, and now I'm now I'm a decent human being. None of that sort of stuff happens to me anymore. I'm convinced that they're just not focusing on the road when they come at me on the pavement. Yeah, it happens a lot. Yeah, once a day. Yeah, once every couple of days. That's bad driving around. Yeah. yeah. Um, Simon Day was uh, talking to me as well. Actually, yeah, interesting conversation with him about our brand and uh, whether or not we can expand it out. Uh, we're waiting to hear from him. We're going to have a chat with him. We're going to get him down and tell us something sort of he does for brand development. Sports sponsorship. So that'd be good. I um, And last but not least, yeah, to going back to the Stan Wawrinka, I think he's worth a, 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 a half decent bet on him to win his next match in straights because Dolgopolov is, let's face it, mental. Yeah. He's pretty random. Yeah. And yeah. so if he's going to get cuffed, he's going to get beaten pretty straight up. Yeah. It's not going to be a tussle no, either way. So. Either he comes out and plays lights out and beats Stan straight up or it straight sets the other way. So again, if Stan wins the first set, bet fair, I'm pretty certain you could sell the bet as long as he's a break-up in the second. Um, as long as he's not a break-up in the second, because the odds have dropped back awfully. If he goes a set up, just take what you can take, because you know, they're, they're going to be keen on. Um, but what sort of odds would you be looking for here? Um, <clears throat> Stan against Dolgopolov, I'm going to be looking for at least even money. Um, yeah. That sort of stakes. I mean, it'd be interesting to have a look and see what they're offering at the moment on Betfair. Let's have a look while we're on air. 
So, second round matches, you've got Golgopolov against Vagnerinka, match odds. He stands 1.62 to win straight up, but if you go number of sets, two sets is 1.49, they're pretty certain it's going to be that way. Let's see... Uh, it's set betting, what's the set, set betting? Yeah, I'm just trying to find that, actually. Towards the bottom. Golgopolov uh, against Vagnerinka. Just set betting, yeah. there you go. So, Vavrinka straight sets, even money, 2.14. That's, yeah, that's pretty decent money, because, I mean, Dolgopolov is not getting it done in straight sets. He hasn't Unless, done that well recently, and yeah. people are sort of starting to figure out how to play him. Right. He's sort of, he was one of those guys who burst on tour, you know, playing a different brand of tennis, different style of tennis, you know, just being random. Yeah. Throwing in that dodgy slice, really fast service action. Right. You know. Um, and people figure you out. It's, it, it happens to so many of them, you know? Yeah. Nishikori, first on tour. You know, people are like, haven't, haven't played this guy before, don't quite know how to play him. Right. Then has a bit of an off off time because people are like, yeah, no, now, yeah. We, now we know how to play it. Then, then he sort of grows into it. Same thing happened with Tomic, you know, all those guys. Okay. So I think uh, Dogopolov is sort of in that lull at the moment and he's, he kind of needs to figure out how to get out of it. Um. Last but not least, Fabio Fognini against Rafa Nadal. 23 to 1, Fognini to win. Again, that's the kind of bet where you back him at 23 to 1, you hope to God he gets an early break, mm. and you sell it straight away. Don't hang on the start thinking, wow, this guy's playing really well, because Rafa doesn't play badly for two sets. It doesn't happen. He also doesn't lose yeah. to anybody. He yeah. isn't Djokovic. Yeah, on play for. exactly. You know, he's lost to three people on play in his career. Federer twice, Djokovic a few times, mm -hmm. and that other guy at the beginning of the year. What was his name? Do you remember? That journeyman. I do. Uh, Zabios. Zabios, sir. Good memory. Oh, good memory, yeah. It's, it's, and that was his first tournament back after yes, seven exactly. months off. So, you know, you've got to go to forgive him that. But 23 to 1 with Betfair they're offering on whatever odds, you know, whatever you choose, match wins or not. I think that's a nice one to take a, a, a little cut on get out. Break up, one, two love up, just get out. Mm -hmm. Because it'll drop back to about 18 to one. Um, if you put a 10 on at 23 to one, you probably make about 40 quid by selling that early. Right. Um, so that's not bad at all. Because um, at 23 to one, you've got 230 to play with, drops to 17, you should be able to cash out, take about 25. So you're double and a half your money, that's not a bad bet at all. And last but not least, um, the women's tournament, um, I am gonna give them a mention. Um, and winner Serena Williams at 2.4, Sharapova's 4.3, Radvanska is a thousand to one. I mean, to put, unless she's already lost and I'm missing something, I'd put a pound on that. Why not? I think she can, I mean, and I mean, a thousand to one? But Serena at even money is still not that bad. Yeah, Serena's even money is not bad, but you could put two pounds on Serena and one on Egne and Radvanska, because if Serena wins it, you'll get your pound back. <laughs> and worst case, if you go with Agnieszka Radvanska and she gets anywhere near the f sniff of the final, which is highly unlikely, but if she does, yeah, you know, lay off 500 of that, you'd, you'd be laughing as well. So those are our picks for today. So just to recap, as we said, you know, Fognini, early bet, get out. Stan Vavrinka, straight sets against Dolgopolov. Your pick was? Uh, I quite like Anderson to beat Burditch. In three or in just three in general. So Anderson, Kevin Anderson to beat Burdick in three. Yeah. Um, and uh, Fidasco might be worth a cheeky one okay. against Ferrer. And lastly, you said Federer to win the tournament. Federer to win the tournament. To one. Thirteen to one. For Again, sure. you're looking yeah. to lay that one off somewhere in the middle of the match. And talking about laying off, we're about to lay off air now. Um, we want to thank you very much if you've been watching us live. Um, and if you're not, you're watching the Arsenal match and you're catching up with us later on. Thanks for watching. Anyway, I'm Rashi Ahmed. Chris Eaton. Take care, guys. All the best. We'll see you next week. Oh, my God.